Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to make a hydromel, which is a mead that is below 7% ABV. Let's get started. So today we're making a hydromel. It is a very simple, pretty cheap mead to make. This is just going to be a standard, nothing extra added other than honey, water, and yeast hydromel. And it's gonna be great, I'm excited for it. So, let's go ahead and start with our recipe. It is right up here, 7 eighths of a gallon of water, roughly about 1.25 pounds of honey. We are using the Lauvin EC1118, which is a great mead yeast. It's a good yeast in general for wine making and mead making. In the um, latter stages of the mead, we might add some, um, some acid blend of some sort and maybe some maltodextrin to build up body. We'll also need to, or, or this is gonna be carbonated, so we might use some priming sugar. Here's your, uh, if you're just now making a hydromel or want to know how to make it, you need that recipe. You also need some equipment, probably a glass carboy of some sort or container to ferment in. You need a hydrometer for sure. You need a tube for um, putting mead in to float your hydrometer in, a tube or a tall cup. You need something to stir with and a bung and an airlock. Later on, you'll need a racking cane, an auto siphon, some of those things, but we're not there yet. So let's first get started. Um, I have already mixed in the you know, ingredients. I did this before in a big batch because I'm making this, uh, I'm making four gallons of hydromel. I'll explain in a moment. This, I'll show you right here. I mixed it all up, honey and water and yeast, just stirred it up and uh, you know, weighed everything out, did all that stuff. That was simple. So right here though, this is one gallon of it. We need to first take a hydrometer reading. The hydrometer reading is really important. It tells you how alcoholic your brew is going to be, assuming that the yeast eat all the sugars or at least part of them. So I'm floating my hydrometer in here and I've already done this a couple times. So I know for a fact that we are sitting at 1.040 starting gravity, which is roughly about a 5% mead. That's right underneath that 7% range, which is great for a hydromel. So uh, one really important thing to do before any of this, I should have mentioned it, step one, make sure you sanitize everything really well. I use Star San, which is a, a brewing grade sanitizer to clean all of my equipment. If you don't do this, there's a great chance you will end up with a bad fermentation because you have to kill the wild yeast, wild bacteria, Otherwise they will create alcohol themselves, which can sometimes be bad. So always sanitize your stuff, super important. Now we know our starting gravity, 1.040. We now are going to take and add our yeast in. This is my Lauvin EC1118 packet. I need one gram of it. So I'm gonna measure that out. That is one gram of Lauvin EC1118. That's a, enough for a hydromel. You don't need five grams for your whole brew. Save some yeast. This is mixed in. I could have rehydrated them, but I didn't. That's okay. Now we are ready to go ahead and put our airlock on, which is going to bubble and show that this is fermenting. After the primary fermentation, fermentation, which is when the uh, yeast have eaten all the sugars that they can, we are going to do some extra things to help build out body, pronounce honey character, do everything we need. So let me put my airlock on and let's let this thing go through the primary fermentation. And we're back with the traditional hydromel. It's been three weeks since this started fermenting. It has slowed down and um, cleared up obviously some. So now we're gonna take a gravity reading to see if it's actually done, then talk about the next steps. Okay, our gravity reading shows that we're at 1.000. We started at 1.045. Now we're through all of the gravity, which means that this is done fermenting. This is through the primary fermentation. We are going to add some more sugars here in a second to um, carbonate it in the bottle. So let's talk about that. But first, let's do a taste test. Now, aroma-wise, with this being such a light mead, um, you do get that slight aromatic honey character. Slightly yeasty because obviously it's still young. Three weeks is pretty young for a mead. But it does have a retained honey character, which I like. Yeah, you get the... Um, it's a muted honey character. It's a muted floral side, a little bit of sweetness. The honey character is there. That's what's important. Definitely got a little yeasty taste to it as well. It's not bad by any means, but it's, it's not 
not very sweet for one, which I kind of want it to be a little sweeter. It's also uh, pretty thin bodied. It doesn't have a lot of uh, fullness, or a lot of body to kind of support it. The way we can fix this is by um, adding two things. Well, well, I'll say this, <laughs> alongside the body, it doesn't have a lot of um, bite in a good way. So I need to add some acid blend. I'm gonna add three things to this now, four things. Um, I am going to add some acid blend, wherever it's at. This is my acid blend. This will help add some acidity, some bite to the mead, which will ultimately give it some more depth. Um, we are going to also add some maltodextrin for body to fill out the body of the mead, which is what this is for. Then, because we don't wanna add any sugar that the yeast can ferment on because they will just kick up again, we wanna retain sweetness, we're gonna add some erythritol, which is a non-fermentable sugar. And priming sugar, which priming sugar is uh, usable by yeast, and this is what we will put in there to help bottle carbonate it because that's the option. Now you're looking at some of this going, I don't really wanna add acid blend to this or I don't wanna add maltodextrin or a white powder or non-fermentable sugar. That's okay. You kinda of have to go a different route. If you wanna avoid adding powders, so to speak, to this thing, you're gonna to have to use some alternative, natural alternatives, like building body can be done with tea sometimes. Um, the acid side can be adjusted with lemons and limes if you do a little bit of zesting and a little bit of juicing within the mead. Um, priming sugar can be, be replaced with things like regular sugar or even honey, if you're careful. The uh, non-fermentable sugar is where you get stuck. If you wanna do this without a non-fermentable sugar to, to back sweeten, you're going to need to stabilize the mead first, which means you're gonna have to have a forced carbonation method. So that's just kind of um, catch 22. Before we can do any of these additions, we are now going to move this out of this container. So let me do that real fast. All right, now I'm gonna add my acid blend, my maltodextrin and my erythritol. And I'm gonna get them to, I'll tell you everything I add in a moment, but my goal is to get it to where, where I feel like it tastes the best as it is. So let me add all of these things and then I'll tell you how much I've added. All right, here's a list of everything I've added so far. Started with the acid blend. I added a half of a teaspoon of acid blend. Then I added the, what did I add next? The maltodextrin, which uh, was roughly about two tablespoons. Then I added erythritol, which was four tablespoons. And then at the very end, I added 26.5 grams of um, priming sugar, which is what will allow it to bottle carbonate. All right, so let's taste test it. Ooh, yeah. The acid blend really adds that extra bite, that extra um, character that's really kind of nice, makes it more refreshing. It has definitely, it's definitely more sweet because of the erythritol. It's not super sweet, not too in your face. It's kind of like a less sweet cider, in my opinion right now. Of course, it's not carbonated. It's got a better mouthfeel, a better body. It's not very thin, which was something that was problematic before. And then of course the priming sugar's in there, so that's gonna be converting into carbonation as this referments. So um, now our next step, I'm happy with this. I am gonna go ahead and bottle it. So let me, let me bottle it real fast and then we will let it carbonate for two weeks and then come back and do a taste test. All right, and here we are. It's been about three weeks, three and a half weeks since we did anything with this. This is the classy barb, as I'm calling it. It is the traditional hydromel. And we're gonna go ahead and crack it open and see if it carbonated, first of all. Let's find out if it did. Oh yeah, that for sure did. No bottle bombs, no over carbonation, because that would have started going nuts. Let's go ahead and pour it, and I'll get closer for you. All right, so let's go and pour this thing. Let's see what it looks like. This glass is not perfectly clean, sorry. Yeah, look at that carbonation. That looks good. Oh man, that thing looks great. Very, very clear. And I know the camera's not doing justice right now, but it's pretty bright. I mean, it's pretty clear and 
Got some carbonation. Let's go ahead and taste it now. All right, so let's taste test it. Here we have it. Let's get aroma, of course. Definitely still a um, little, not really, a uh, little yeasty. I mean, that's gonna be natural because there is bottle carbonation. It has a decent character from um, the honey. There's some floral side. There's that bright floral that you get. Um, yeah, let's try it. Ooh, okay, it's um not as sweet as I would like. I think I should have back sweetened a little more, but it's very refreshing. That carbonation is nice. Um, it does have a, a decent body to it. There's a good like acid adjustment, and I know we did some, some stuff with that because that's what we did. And it, it allows you to um, kind of get a multi-dimensional product because you get Acidity, you get a little bit of sweetness from the erythritol slash honey character. You get the honey character, which is that floral side, and then you get this uh, kind of warm blanket of carbonation and then just a, a all around mouthfeel. It's a little slightly, slightly puckering. Doesn't have a lot of tannic value, which means that it doesn't have, um, I tannin can sometimes be considered like Grit, or I would think of it maybe as like the uh, pooling of moisture from your mouth when you try something. A very tannic wine will make you kind of pucker up some. I mean, this thing's this thing's pretty good. It's not the best thing ever. I think that's because I didn't again back sweeten enough. If I'd back sweetened more, it probably would have pronounced the honey character. There would have been a little bit of a uh, mental change in that my brain would have thought. The honey was the thing that was back sweetening, sweetening it more because there's floral side if I combined that actual erythritol on top. Anyways, wish it was sweeter. This is something I look forward to making, to making in the summer again. It's very simple, very cheap, and of course I'll throw the recipe here. This is for the one gallon. You can make this as big as you want, multiply by whatever you want to do, use whatever type of honey you want to use, and all of those things. I have three other hydromels that I've made, and you might see them now. I don't know what order these videos will come out, but there will be four total hydromels, and then a flight night video. If you wanna check those out, I'll make sure and put those in the description. There's an apple hydromel, there's a pear hydromel, and there's a banana hydromel. And um, I must say that as I've worked on these videos, I've enjoyed them quite a bit. So I hope you will check, me, or check out the channel and that you will follow those videos. I also hope to, um, Give you guys some fun recipes in the future if you want to see what i'm going to do throughout 2021 make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want to make a mead like this follow the recipe and go for it go buy some ingredients i highly recommend you jump on the wagon and go for it thanks again for watching i hope to see you guys in a future video i'll see you next time Cheers.